team, how's it going today? We're going to be working on the 429 racks for the uh, L numbers. So I'm not going to go into detail on everything as far as how I do, you know, the racks. There's tons of videos on those. But I'm just going to kind of document it on how we, um, you know, build it as far as how actually I do it. So it's pretty similar. Basically, it's the structure and make sure it's stable side to side. So we're going to uh, start on this. Now I'm gonna document it the best I can as far as time lapse and everything like that and just kind of go over as I see stuff that needs to be addressed. But really it's about uh, setting it up as far as the takes, uh, about the distance. And then I put the three two by fours in the middle there and that kind of gives me the distance of total rack width and length. Um, so let's get going. Lily, you gonna say hi? Say hi. 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 Santa. Say hi. Hi, hi you too. Okay. okay. And, then, and then Ryan, you gonna say hi? These are my helpers today. It's a little cold here, so we're in my basement. All the uh, HVAC has been set up, but the vents aren't um, uh, exposed yet. I have them all blocked up so we can make sure we're getting enough heat upstairs. Um, but I'm gonna have to open all those up soon. So Lily, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. So it's about nine degrees right now outside. So until we get everything down here, as far as um, you know, the carpets and everything, it's gonna be a little bit cooler. So, okay, Lily, stop. Say hi. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get going. All right, ready? Okay, close your eyes. extend them out if I want to throw a tank on top I want to be able to have that base so this is a six foot base um, it's probably about seven eight inches too big but that's on purpose because worst case scenario I have to build this thing and I just drop these down and cut off those ends so I want to always go wider and then cut you know later so I do put these metal braces in because of bowing and cupping uh, what you'll notice is the two by fours even though we store them flat they want, a, they want a bow or cup. And so that just kind of straightens it out and gives me a nice, because the base is important that it's sturdy. So I do use, um, so I pre-drill all the holes because I don't want to crack. So, and if I was doing all the same racks, all the same exact sizes, I'd figure my measurements out and I would cut a bunch of boards at once. But because these racks are custom and each one's gonna be a little different as far as direction of the tanks or where they're gonna sit in my room. But the main reason is, the reason why I'm building my racks is if I was to buy metal racks, you're probably talking $250, $300, and they're wide, so they're two foot wide. And in my fishing right now, I'm, uh, space is very tight, so I have to get these things custom fit in there, and that way it maximizes my whole room where I can put literally all these tanks are going to go in my room still. If you see my room, you know it's pretty packed already. But I figured out a way to put all those in there uh, and still have room for some more if I want. So one thing that I am doing is I'm getting rid of all my tents. I will have about four or five tents in there left for like breeding ram pairs and stuff like that. But I just find the tents are too much maintenance because I got to constantly stay on top of them. So nothing will be under 20 gallons. Um, except for those few tens. I will keep a couple because they're nice to do like small quarantines and stuff in, so it's good. Because uh, most medications come in, you know, 10, 10 gallon increments, so it works. Uh, but 20s are nice too because you just cut that or double that 10 uh, ratio. So this is the first step, and then I'll build off of this. Now, you see my tanks below here, and I have those three boards in there. So the middle board, because it's going to be over four feet, 
It'll be a six foot. It's actually a five six, I think, or five five is the actual rack. <clears throat> but um, because I'm going over four feet, I'm gonna have to put center center supports in, so I don't get any bowing or cupping in them. It's very rare to get a bow or cup this way. It's usually you know this way. But what I found is that four foot, I'm just comfortable not putting. Um, middle braces in, but anything over that, I like to do that. So um, I'm gonna keep going, and then I'll just uh, kind of break down each section, how I do it, and why I do it that way. Now, is this is this the right way or the wrong way? I have no idea, it's my way. I've built, I don't know, 30 racks over my days. Mo I, I would really enjoy just going and buying the uh, steel racks, but literally it cuts off a lot of my paths because um, I do barrel cleaning, so when I clean barrels, I want those barrels to go through my room. So I'm constantly building everything around that barrel where it can get through. But that barrel is also a perfect size for walking where I don't have to turn to go through a, an aisle. I can walk through all my aisles straight. Um, but that's about it. So I'm going to keep going and then I'll kind of just go through each step um, and pre-drill. And I really love the deck screws. So that's one thing is you'll notice is I don't use Phillips screws. What I've found is with these deck screws, you get better shear strength. Uh, so I use a 10 by two and a half. But because of these, they have this driving bit in it. So I don't know if you can see that or not, if that shows up. But anyways, it has, so on my, it has this star bit on it. I forgot what they call it. I think it's a star bit. Um, but what happens is you get better uh, grip, so it drives a lot easier and you don't get any slippage. With the Phillips, you tend to slip after a while because they start to wear down where this thing grabs and puts it in. Uh, so I like these a lot and also, you know, these things are designed to hold people on decks. So if they're, if they're going to do that, I mean, you're going to see I over-engineer these things. I've I haven't really built houses, but I've fixed houses up and I understand the, the, how shearing works and stuff like that and also, you know, how structure works. So I overbuild them because I don't want to have to ever fix it. You know, I don't ever want a tank collapsing on me. Um, so you'll see I go a little bit extreme, but for the extra, I don't know, 10 minutes and probably $15 in wood. Alrighty, so we've gotten the first level done. Uh, I ran into some issues with the house, so I had to take care of a couple things, so I'm back. And um, I put this together. So you'll notice that I've thrown a middle stabilizer in there, and there'll be a metal stabilizer going up to the next one. Now I wanted to make it high enough where I could store under here, so I'll put like shelving under there and everything. And then let's say it's, because the floors aren't level, they're just not level. So let's say I have a little rock in my, uh, yeah, there is a little bit of rock. So it's on this side, it's a little high. I'll take this. So I don't know if this is the front or back yet, so I'm gonna pick the best for the front and the back. But I'll just run some shims over here too. So, and this floor might be much different than the floor in there. So I just wanted to kind of show you that you're never gonna get them exactly level, it's impossible. But what you don't want, so it's not it's not bad if the, if the uh, tape, is up this way or this way or this way or this way. It's the twisting. So if this corner and this corner are opposite and they kind of rock a little bit from here to here, you're gonna get a crack. It'll crack eventually. Now these 29s, it might be okay uh, because it's not holding a ton of water, but 100 gallon, 150 gallon, you definitely wanna make sure that your corners on the opposites are uh, not. I did here as far as the supports. So these are, these are the structure right here, okay? These, these are what's most important. This is what's holding the weight. So you figure 30 gallons, that's about 600 pounds on this and then it'll be 600 pounds on top. Now that's just a good average to figure. Just take the gallons and times it times 10, unless you're putting a ton of rock in there. Now if you're putting a ton of rock in there, you wanna add some weight, but my degree really bare bottom. Um, and then so these are the structure, here to here, right? These are guides. So these inside ones, they have no structural integrity, but what they are doing is helping the structure so it doesn't tilt side to side, back to back, okay? And then this gives me enough room to run this one outside, up along here, and what that's gonna do is gonna come up and across, 
and then it's going to tie into those. And then if I want, I can throw it outside to make it even more structurally sound. But usually that's enough because by, by securing it here, along here, into here, you're gonna get enough structure. Now you might get a little bowing over time, side to side. So I'll look at that and if that's the case, then I'll throw another two by four on the outside. But uh, pretty simple design. Uh, that's how I build all my racks. Um, but like I said, there's a ton of stuff online if you wanna find a different way to build the rack. So just understand that each of these racks is custom. So there's not, you know, a set design or dimensions. It's like that. It's kind of just as I go, I'm setting the tanks on, I'm measuring the tanks. I want to make sure there's another structure here that I can come up in between them. I have enough to go on the outside here. But also I don't like to leave my tanks so tight. But front to back, yes, I put the I put the two by four and I leave about a quarter inch on each side of the uh, two by four so it can sit on that flush, okay? Because really these corners are the key. So, and I don't use, sometimes I put uh, plywood under it, but I'm not gonna on these. All right, so here we go. Here's the rack, it's all finished. I built this rack so we could get it to the water, so the main's right there. I wanted to have that main accessible. That's the main for the entire home. Uh, right behind that, uh, that insulation is the shutoff valve. So I wanna have access to that at all times. So I built this rack purposely on, on, this, uh, on this size because I wanted it to go a little long here. And that way I could bring the two, have the supports on the inside and then I could have the rack uh, these close together on the bottom, but also that way I could bring these tanks over so this one's not behind that tank, and that one's just barely behind it, which is fine, and this tank comes over, but that gives me enough length there to put the supports in and everything. So the top's not gonna have the supports, obviously, because that's just the top. So a three-foot rule, uh, actually it's a four-foot rule, so I wanted to make sure that uh, anything over four feet, I put supports in. So let me put this up real quick, and then we'll talk about some other things. So I wanted to make it so I could feed easily and change water easily. Uh, bottoms aren't painted yet. I'm not sure, I might run sand in them. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do as far as what fish. So depending on what fish, if it's corridors, I'll probably do sand, um, but I'm just not quite sure what I'm gonna do with these yet. And these can turn into uh, discus uh, grow outs too. They're 29s, so it holds 25 gallons of water net, uh, or gross, I'm sorry. And then um, I wanted to make sure I had access to my window. So I can, sh I can open my window in the summertime if I need a little bit of fresh air because it gets warm here in the summer. I've gotten this room at, I've walked into like 92 of one, one summer day. So I want to be able to crack that window, get some fans and circulation going. And it's hot in here. So it sucks that I had to bring this in, but the last thing I want to do is build this thing out there and then have to take it all apart to rebuild it in here. So it was kind of a pain, but it was such a tight fit. And that's one thing I have to say about building a fish room is plan, 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 plan. Always over plan. And that way when you execute it, you're not guessing because you know I'm dealing with inches here. So this rack total cost me about $75 to build, and I'm gonna say two hours total build time, but I, I probably could have built it in an hour and a half if I didn't have so much going on. But about, let's, let's call it two hours. Two hours and 75 bucks. So a metal rack, $300, the Gorilla Racks, $300, uh, 250 you can find it for. Uh, but the problem is with those is they come out two feet. 
So it would have came out about to here. So I would have I wouldn't have been able to do this with a, a gorilla rack. So that's why I kind of built my custom. And all my racks are going to be custom now because everything is so tight. And I got to have walking spaces. So you can see here that you know I have enough to run my barrel here. I don't do automatic water changes. I just think it makes you lazy as a fish keeper. Personally, my first fish room I actually had uh, automatic water changes, auto feeders in there. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of the reason why I got out of it for a while because I was relying so much on those water change systems that I would notice I would stay out of the room for a few days to a week sometimes, and I'd come back and there was always a problem that I didn't I didn't take care of, and I could have if I'd been you know at at, at the uh, fish room. So that's one reason why I built this fish room like this because my my thought process is if if I'm not going to take care of it, I'm going to shut it down. I'm not gonna just put it on auto, auto, auto. If I, I, I gotta be down here two to three times a day minimum, okay? And if I'm not gonna do that, then the fish room's going away because I'm just not in the mood to deal with problems. So I try to touch all my tanks at least once a day. I try to come down twice a day. Uh, some days I can only get down here once a day, but I at least do once a day. And I just find the auto water turn just makes you lazy because you're relying on them a little too much. And it's like, oh, I don't need to go down there. The water's changing and all that, or the auto feeders are firing, I'm good. Um, so it's a choice you have to make, okay? And for me, it just, this is the way I wanted to do it. Uh, when I built my next fish room, I always promised myself I would never do that again, uh, just because personally it was just a nightmare. And it, I think it's one of the reasons why I got out of my first fish room was because I was relying too much on uh, technology even back then you know 25 years ago so uh, everything is um, and uh, now as far as auto water changes if I could do like a manual switch that would probably be okay because I could be in the room and do that uh, but I just find that I like I actually like being in the water I like looking at the tanks I like touching the tanks I like getting the bottoms clean I like cleaning the filters I like doing all that stuff and I know that some people don't like doing that and you know that's one of the reasons why some of the fish suffer I think because we're not taking care of them daily like any you know with your dog your cat you're constantly looking at them and making sure they're okay and feeding them twice a day so and cleaning up after them so but um, I just want to thank everybody for subscribing I want to thank everybody for watching the videos it's been really amazing uh, I'm pretty blown away that people want to, you know, come in and see my fish room and, you know, listen to me ramble on like this. But, um, so this is just the one rack. There's still two more full racks to go. Uh, next video is going to be on the discus water. Uh, I'm about 50% done. I'm doing it a little bit more of a uh, old style with, uh, you know, kind of breakdowns and stuff like that. So I know there's not much fish in this video and, and if it doesn't do well, that's fine. But it, Sometimes I make these videos just to help people because when I started uh, in this hobby, there was really nothing as far as information. So we are constantly trying to get information and really it's, you know, trial and error, trial and error, making lots of mistakes and then learning from those mistakes. But, you know, talking to other breeders and going to fish clubs and really that's the only way we could read and read books. Uh, and the internet was kind of new, but there was just, um, like uh, what do they call them, the chats or whatever. There wasn't really websites or stuff you could go to and check. And, and the information was sketchy anyway. So um, that's one thing we have now is the, you know, the internet, which makes things awesome. Uh, but sometimes you gotta filter some of that information out because not all of it's really good. I, I see stuff online about even my other businesses that I just cringe at because, um, you know, and, and it's okay to have an opinion but you have to call it that. It's it's an opinion, okay? This is how I feel. This is what I think. This is my opinion, okay? Because this hobby is evolving and it's going to grow, uh, um, be amazing in the next 20, 30 years. Uh, and it's already come a long way. So um, just, just want to thank everybody and I really appreciate everybody watching my videos and um, have a great day.
yeah, yeah.